What if I told you that one of the world's most iconic airlines is about to retire the aircraft that defined long-haul aviation for an entire generation? That Qantas, the carrier that operated the record-breaking London to Sydney route on the Boeing 747, is preparing to hand over that crown to something completely different. Something faster, more efficient, and capable of opening routes that shouldn't exist on paper. Welcome to the story of Qantas's first Airbus A350-1000 the aircraft that's about to transform how one of the world's longest airlines connects the world. If you love aviation and want to stay updated on the latest developments in the industry, hit that subscribe button now. For over 50 years, one image symbolized Australia's connection to the world. The Boeing 747, that iconic hump silhouette, became synonymous with Qantas's long-haul operations. Generations of passengers experienced their first international flight on a Qantas 747. Flight crews built their careers around this legendary machine, and the airline's engineering teams became virtuosos at pushing the jumbo to its absolute limits. But times change, aircraft age, and sometimes revolutionary new machines arrive that make even the most beloved predecessors seem like relics of a previous era. That's exactly what's happening right now as Qantas prepares to take delivery of its first A350-1000 an aircraft so fundamentally different from the 747 that it will redefine what long-haul aviation means for the Australian carrier. Here's the thing nobody talks about when airlines retire their flagship fleets. It's not just about getting new planes. It's about what those new planes enable. It's about the routes that suddenly become possible, the economics that suddenly make sense, the competitive advantages that suddenly open up. The Qantas 747 fleet, despite its legendary status, is fundamentally a product of 1960s and 1970s engineering. Four massive engines, enormous fuel consumption, vast cabin volume, but at tremendous operational cost. Airlines have managed these machines brilliantly, but there's an engineering ceiling you simply can't break through. The A350-1000 isn't just an incremental step forward, it's a complete reimagining of what a wide-body aircraft should be. Consider the scale of what's about to happen. Qantas has ordered 23 A350-1000 as part of Project Sunrise. Their strategy to operate ultra-long-range flights that were previously impossible. Not just long, ultra-long. We're talking routes like Sydney to London non-stop, Sydney to New York non-stop. Flights that would require the stamina of a 747 with the efficiency of a modern twin-engine jet. On paper, it shouldn't work. A single-aisle aircraft achieves this kind of range routinely, but a wide body? That's a different engineering problem entirely. Yet here we are, staring at the reality of an aircraft that solves problems aviation experts weren't even sure needed solving. The first A350-1000 destined for Qantas is in its final stages of preparation at Airbus's Toulouse facility. As of early 2025, this aircraft isn't just sitting on the tarmac. It's being tested, evaluated, fine-tuned to meet the exacting standards of an airline that doesn't accept mediocrity. Qantas operates some of the world's longest routes, with experience managing aircraft over distances that would make most carriers nervous. They know exactly what to demand from a new aircraft, and the A350-1000 is being built to meet those demands. But what exactly makes the A350-1000 so revolutionary? Well, let's start with the engines. The Rolls-Royce Trent XWB97. A power plant so advanced it represents a complete departure from previous generation turbofans. These engines deliver 470 kilonewtons of thrust, roughly equivalent to the combined power output of the original 747's four Pratt and Whitney engines. Yet here's the crucial difference. Two engines achieving what previously required four. The Trent XWB97 isn't just powerful, it's extraordinarily efficient. It delivers up to 25% better fuel economy compared to older wide-body engines. A reduction that translates to millions of dollars in savings over an aircraft's operational lifetime. For Qantas, operating routes that sometimes exceed 20 hours in duration, fuel efficiency isn't a luxury. It's the difference between profitability and unsustainable operations. The aerodynamic design deserves equal attention. The A350's fuselage, unlike the 747's traditional aluminum construction, incorporates extensive composite materials. We're talking carbon fiber reinforced polymers making up roughly 53% of the airframe. These materials are lighter, stronger, and more resistant to fatigue than aluminum. 
But that's only part of the story. The A350's wings are marvels of aerodynamic optimization, featuring winglets and an overall design that minimizes drag across the entire flight envelope. The result? An aircraft that pushes 90,000 pounds maximum takeoff weight, roughly a quarter lighter than a similarly configured 747, while carrying similar passenger loads over greater distances. Here's what makes this particularly relevant to Qantas. The 747 required specific runway lengths. Certain airports simply couldn't accommodate the jumbo due to their shorter runways or less robust taxiway structures. The A350-1000, while still a large aircraft, demands significantly less runway. Sydney Airport, already stretched to capacity with current operations, might actually have more flexibility with the A350 than with the 747s it replaces. That sounds trivial until you realize it means Qantas can operate more frequent long-haul flights without infrastructure upgrades. The economics suddenly favor expansion, but we need to talk about what these aircraft will actually experience. Project Sunrise routes aren't hypothetical anymore. Qantas has already published its strategy. London, New York, Singapore, Tokyo, Bangkok, these cities will all be connected to Sydney via Project Sunrise, a 350-1000 flights. Some of these routes will exceed 20 hours in duration. Flight crews will operate in shifts. The aircraft will be pushed to the absolute limits of its performance envelope. This isn't casual operation. This is aviation theater at the highest level. For passengers, the implications are staggering. A 20-hour flight presents unique challenges that aircraft designers spend years considering. The A350-1000 features a cabin that's been specifically engineered for extreme duration operations. The windows, for instance, are 30% larger than conventional aircraft, reducing the fishbowl sensation of looking out from a narrow cabin. The interior lighting uses advanced LED systems that can simulate circadian rhythms, helping passengers adjust to extreme time zone changes. There's increased cabin humidity, up to 22%, compared to the industry standard of 10% which significantly reduces jet lag and passenger fatigue. These might sound like luxury features, but on a 20-hour flight, they become critical factors in passenger satisfaction and airline reputation. The cabins themselves will reflect Qantas premium positioning. We're not talking about dense economy configurations here. The A350-1000 ISS will feature premium business class suites, reminiscent of what you might find on the best international carriers. Direct aisle access in business class, Lie flat seats with storage. These are the aircraft that will be featured in luxury travel publications, attracting premium passengers willing to pay substantial fares for the prestige of flying the newest, most sophisticated wide body in operation. Now here's where it gets genuinely interesting from an industry perspective. The A350-1000 represents a fundamental shift in how airlines think about long haul networks. For decades, the hub-and-spoke model dominated international aviation. Passengers from smaller cities would fly to major hubs, connect to long-haul aircraft, and reach distant continents. It was economically necessary because you needed massive aircraft to justify the fuel costs of ultra-long routes. But what happens when you can operate ultra-long routes more efficiently? What happens when Sydney-London direct service becomes economically viable without requiring full-capacity 747s? The answer is that aviation's geographic logic fundamentally changes. Secondary cities suddenly become viable destinations for long-haul service. Airlines can launch point-to-point -point routes that wouldn't support traditional wide bodies. The competitive advantage shifts away from airlines with the largest hub infrastructure toward airlines with regional networks and the efficiency to serve them with ultra-long-range aircraft. Qantas, based in Sydney, literally at the edge of the developed world, becomes advantaged rather than disadvantaged by its geography. Compare this to what the original 747 enabled back in the 1970s. That aircraft transformed aviation by making long-haul travel accessible to mass markets. The A350-1000 does something different. It transforms aviation by making ultra-long-haul travel economically viable even on routes where demand is moderate rather than massive. You don't need to fill a 500-seat aircraft. A 350-seat aircraft with premium configurations becomes sufficient. The supply chain story behind these aircraft deserves mention. Airbus's A350 program, after some production challenges, has reached a mature state. The company is now delivering aircraft on predictable schedules. For Qantas, ordering 23 aircraft means years of deliveries starting with those first units in 2025 and extending through the 2030s. 
Each delivery will incrementally replace retiring 747s and expand Project Sunrise operations. This is strategic patience. Qantas isn't trying to overnight transform its fleet. Instead, it's methodically transitioning from one generation to the next, managing the operational complexity of mixed fleets during the transition period. The cost dynamics are fascinating too. The 747, even the latest 747-8 variants, cost approximately $445 million per unit when new. The A350-1000 carries a similarly substantial price tag, but the economics over the aircraft's operational lifetime are dramatically different. Lower fuel consumption, reduced maintenance due to fewer engines and more durable materials, higher passenger yields because of premium configurations. These factors compound over 20 to 30 years of operation. Airlines' purchasing decisions increasingly reflect total life cycle costs rather than acquisition price alone. There's also the question of what this means for Boeing. The 747's reign as the ultimate long-haul aircraft is ending. The 777X, Boeing's newest widebody, competes with the A350, but it's a twin-engine design that prioritizes efficiency over cabin volume. It's a fundamentally different aircraft serving somewhat different market segments. For airlines like Qantas with strong brand recognition and premium positioning, the A350 offers advantages particularly the four-engine heritage that appeals to certain carrier segments and passengers. Whether that distinction matters long-term remains to be seen, but for now, Airbus is capturing this particular strategic win. The engineering teams behind this aircraft deserve recognition. The A350 program, spanning nearly two decades from concept to mature production, represents aviation's most ambitious recent endeavor to reimagine long-haul flight. Every component has been questioned, evaluated, and optimized. The result is an aircraft that's genuinely more capable than what it replaces. This isn't marketing. This is engineering reality. As Qantas's first A350-1000 approaches its delivery date, one can't help but consider the symbolism of the moment. An Australian airline historically defined by the distinctive profile of four-engine jumbo jets transitioning to the cutting edge of modern aviation. The next chapter of Qantas isn't nostalgia, it's ambition. It's connecting the distant corners of the globe in ways that were previously economically impossible. It's proving that engineering constraints you accepted as permanent can suddenly become obsolete when the right technology arrives at the right moment. The aircraft isn't just ready to transform Qantas either. It represents what's next for global aviation, ultra-long range efficiency, premium passenger experiences on extreme duration flights, route networks that previously seemed geographically impossible. These are the implications of this single aircraft type being delivered to one airline. Now imagine dozens of airlines deploying similar strategies with their own A350 orders. The aviation industry is mid-transformation, and Qantas's first A350-1000 is one of the most important chapters in that story. What do you think? Is the A350-1000 the aircraft that finally makes the jumbo jet obsolete? Or will there always be a place in aviation for massive four-engine designs? And which Project Sunrise route would you most want to fly on the A350-1000? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you're passionate about aviation and want to stay updated on the latest aircraft developments, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.